This lesson is on an introduction to parametric equation. You will find this introduction in your book on pages 148 through 150. It's very small there, so if you could find a pre-calculus book that has parametric equations in it, I would refer to that. So let's go on. Well, the best way to introduce you to parametric equations is to do a little problem solving. A jungle and wildlife preserve extends 80 miles north and 120 miles east of a ranger station. A ranger leaves from a point 100 miles due east of the station and travels 0.6 miles north and 0.5 miles west every minute. Six tenths of a mile north, five tenths of a mile west every minute. A lion leaves the west edge of the preserve 51 miles due north of the station and at the same time the ranger leaves that station. Each minute the lion travels 0.1 miles north and 0.3 miles east, or one-tenth of a mile north and three-tenths of a mile east. So let's graph this first. We can mark off increments of 10. The ranger leaves 100 miles due east. So this would be east, and this one would be north. So 100 miles would put the ranger right here. The lion leaves the western edge at 51 miles. So this is the ranger, this is the lion. The ranger travels 0.6 miles north and 0.5 miles or 5 tenths of a mile west each minute. Now you can create a regular function for this, but we are breaking this up into its x component and its y component. So let's look at the ranger starts 100 miles due east. That's an x component, so we say x is equal to 100. And it moves 5 tenths of a mile back for every minute. So that's negative 0.5t. And it moves 6 tenths of a mile north for every minute, so that's 0.6. So we've made an x component and a y component for our ranger. That is a set of parametric equations. The lion goes a tenth of a mile north, so that's your y component. And it starts 51 miles north, so it's 51 plus 0.1t. And it goes 0.3 miles west, so x is equal, and that's a positive direction, so it's 0.3t. So we have another set of parametric equations for the lion this time. So ranger lion. Well, let's see how these would graph on a calculator. So let's go to our calculator. Let's go down here to parametric. Now, when I graph these, I want them to be graphed simultaneously, so I've also checked on simultaneous. So when we put our y equal to up, we get x is equal to and y is equal to. Now let's put our equations in. 100 minus 0.5t for x and 0.6t for y. Now our wildlife preserve has certain dimensions. I'm just going to graph this one for now, so let's do our window. Our window starts with t, which is that independent variable that we are using for x and y, so we have to address that just as we did with poles with the theta. So in this case, we can start t at 0 and maybe make t 10 to see how far they get in 10 minutes, and put the t-step at 1 x min at zero, since the wildlife preserve extends out 100 miles at least, so we can put 120 for that with a scale of 10, as I did on my graph. y min again is zero. y goes up to at least 51, so we can make it extend past 51 to 70 for our graph. And again, the scale is 10. So let's graph this, and we see that the ranger only traveled a little bit in those 10 minutes. So let's go on and change our window to maybe 100 minutes and see how far he goes. 
So he goes much farther, and it looks like he will be near to where the lion will be at some point. So let's keep that up and put our lion down. So the equations for the lion are 0.3t and 51 plus 0.110. And let's graph both of these. Now they don't touch. So let's continue on and change our window to be larger than 100, let's say 150. And when this graphs, you'll see a simultaneous graphing of both the lion's path and the ranger's path. And watch to see if they cross at the same time. And obviously, they don't. So they do not come near each other. So the next question is, after we looked at these two paths, how close do they get? Because we know they do not cross each other at the same time, fortunately for the ranger. So let's see how we can do this. So if we create another line here where y is equal to some number, let's say 10, and we use our distance formula, second square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared, we can find out how close these two get. So let's do that. And the way we do this is to go to vars, the y vars. We want parametrics, and we want x2, so we want 3 minus vars, y vars, parametrics again, x1. And we're going to square that, and we're going to add to it y sub 2 minus y sub 1, again from the vars, and y sub 4 minus and that's 2, and we're going to square that. And when we graph, this should be included in our graphing. And we see a horizontal line coming towards the y-axis, and we see how close it gets. And it stops. It seems to stop, but it really doesn't stop. What happens, it gets close to the axis as the distance gets closer, and then it moves back out as the distances get further and further away. Let's find out how close the lion gets in order to have some lunch today. See if he gets anywhere near that ranger. So look at our calculator, and we find out in the calculation portion that we can only do values. We can do dy dx, dy dt, or dx dt. We cannot calculate a certain point in question. So what we need to do is just trace. And if we just start at t is equal to 1 and continue on and trace along 3, is the one we are really looking for. Keep going, 49, 56, 57, this is all in minutes. And if we check our x's around here, if I go back, it's 9.7. 761, 9.765. So when time is 119 minutes, the x coordinates are 9.761 apart, and the y is always at 10. So they are around 9.76 miles away from each other. And so the lion doesn't even get close to getting lunch. He needs to be a lot smarter than that. So this is a nice introduction to parametric equations. Let's go on and do more with them. Suppose we want to set up just any formulas in parametrics. Let's say we have x is equal to t and y is equal to t squared. What would this look like? Well, let's go to our calculator one more time and put in x is equal to t and y is equal to t squared. 
I don't think we need as big a window as we had before, so let's just do a zoom six on this and see what happens. Hmm, we get half of a parabola. Well, let's look at that window. And we see the windows T min is at zero and the T max is at six. That means it is just graphing with a T, usually time, but in this case just a T, is zero and only goes to six. Let's change this to go from negative 10 to 10 and see what happens. This time from the negative t's we get the negative part of our graph. So we knew it was going to be a parabola because just by looking at the equations you can see that if we substitute in x for t in y's we get y is equal to x squared. But again, when you are graphing these on your calculator, make sure you think about doing negative t's as well as positive t's. And in this case, it would be the negative x's as well as the positive x's that come into play. Let's try another one. If x is equal to t, y is equal to sine t. What will this look like? Well, again, if we substitute it in, we get y is equal to sine x, which would be a sine curve. Let's put that on our calculator. And if we graph that, again, I am in zoom six, and we see we get a nice sine wave. Now let's change things a little bit. Let's put in x is equal to cosine t, and y is equal to sine t. This time it's a little bit different. Try that on our calculator sine t there. I'm going to change my window. That part is okay for now. And let's just do um, a negative 4 to 4, negative 4 to 4, and graph that. And lo and behold, we get something that looks almost like a circle. If I do a zoom square, we might get a better looking circle. And again, we have to think about what angles, in this case, would create the circle. So we should really try 0 to 2 pi. So let's change this from 0 to 2 pi. See if that works. And it does. The worm ended when the graph ended, so we know that's what we needed to make our circle. Let's see if I can make that circle just look a little bit better. And we can do that by changing our t-step. Let's do a slower t-step, maybe 0.05, and graph that. It's a little slower. Don't know if it makes a better curve, but remember, as your t-steps get smaller and smaller, A, it takes longer to graph, B, you're graphing more points. Let's look at one other formula. Let's look at this cosine and sine business again. How does this work with Cartesian coordinates? Well, if we square x, we get x squared is equal to cosine squared t. If we square y, we get y squared is equal to sine squared t. Add the x squared and the y squared up, which means we add cosine squared and sine squared up. And of course, cosine squared t plus sine squared t is 1, so we get x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And this was certainly a circle centered around the origin with a radius of 1. Let's go to another interesting parametric equation. x is equal to 3 cosine cubed t and y is equal to 3 sine cubed t. Let's put this on our calculator. So we have 3 and cosine t cubed, and then 3 sine t cubed. Let's graph that, and we get what is known as a hypocycloid. And in this case, the endpoints are at the threes on the different axes. 
And this is one of the curves that are used a lot in parametrics and for calculus. So let's look how we can develop its rectangular coordinate equation. x is equal to 3 cosine cubed t. So let's take the cubed root of both sides. So we have x over 3 to the 1 third is equal to cosine t. And y over 3 to the 1 third is equal to sine t. And of course, if we square both of these and add them together, we get x over 3 to the 2 thirds plus y over 3 to the 2 thirds is equal to 1. And that is your rectangular form for your hypocycloid. What do you need to know when it comes to parametrics? You need to know how to graph them. You need to know the meaning behind the x's and the y's. We will be coming back to these when we do vectors because vectors and parametrics are very, very close together. And make sure you know what the components are doing, the x component and the y component. This concludes your lessons on an introduction to parametric equations.